All right, everyone, in this video, we're going to be looking at the configuration basics for the site. All right, so let's go over to the ViewPress Tutorial 5 configuration basics post, and I'll just zoom in over here so you can see it a little bit easier. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how to add a config file to the site. Then we're going to get into some config file properties, specifically the title property, then the description property, and then we're going to take a look at the head property. And then at the end, we will have our updated config file. So this is what the config file is going to look like at the end of the video. All right, so currently the site consists of a home page with a title saying Hello ViewPress and a search box provided by the default theme, which builds an index from all H2 and H3 markdown headers and from the title and tags included in the front matter of pages. All right, so we're going to be discussing the default theme, markdown, and front matter in more detail in future tutorials. And now to see your site, be sure to start your local development server, which should be running at localhost port 8080. So over here, I already have it running. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that we have the home page here. It says Hello ViewPress, and that's the page title right here. And then in the search box, if we type in H, you can see we get a search result with Hello ViewPress, which would be to this page right here. And that search box is provided by the default theme. Now, over here, you can see that I have the readme.md file open, which is the home page of the site. And then I already started the local development server down there in that terminal. And to do that, you can just run yarn docs colon dev, and then that'll start your local development server. All right, so let's go back over here. And we can see that the site is working, but it doesn't have a lot of functionality or customization. And to add more functionality and customization, like site navigation with the nav bar, a site title, site description, favicons, etc. We need to add a config file. Now, before adding the config file, we're going to first create a .viewpress directory in the docs directory. And the .viewpress directory will be used to store all ViewPress specific directories and files. All right, so if we come over here, and if we open up a terminal, we can see that we're in the CodeMonkeys block tutorials repository, and we are on the tutorial 5 branch we can just list out in here and then you can see that we have that docs file right there so if we cd into docs and then we list out in here you can see we have that readme.md file which is the home page now inside of here is where we want to make that dot view press directory so you can just make the directory in here with that command and then if we list out we can see we have that dot view press directory inside of the docs directory all right so after creating that dot view press directory your directory structure is going to look similar to this so you'd have that docs directory right there, and then inside of there, you'd have that .viewpress directory and all these other directories and files we've talked about in previous videos. All right, so now inside of the .viewpress directory, that's where we're gonna to wanna to add that config.js file. So if we come back over here, and what we wanna do is cd into .viewpress, and then we can touch the config.js file that's going to make that config.js file inside of here. So if we ls, we can see we have that config.js file inside of our .viewpress directory. So after adding the config.js file, the, the directory structure for your site should now look something similar to this over here with the docs directory, that .viewpress directory, and then inside of there you have that config.js file. All right, so now let's close out of this terminal. And what we're going to do is we are going to go down to this config.js file. We're going to open this up. And inside of the config.js file, we want to export a JavaScript object like the following that you see right there. So we want to do module.exports.exports. And then we set that equal to this empty object. And let's just save that file. All right, so inside of here, we are just exporting a JavaScript object like you see with that module.exports, and then we just set it equal to that empty object for now. All right, so if you run into any issues when adding the directory and file above, then be sure to check out the configuration documentation right here to kind of walk you through what we just did. All right, so you also have some alternative config format so in this series we're going to be using a javascript config file format so that would be that config.js file 
But ViewPress also supports the following config file format. So you could have a YAML config. So you could do, have a config.yaml file or a TOML. So you could have a config.toml file. You also have the option of using TypeScript. So you could have a config.ts file. But if you want to use TypeScript, then you need to have a ViewPress version of 1.9.0 or newer installed. And we're using version 1.8.2. So we won't be using the TypeScript for our config file. All right, so if you're interested in using TypeScript though, you can check out the TypeScript as config documentation right here to see how you can do that. All right, so now let's get into the config file properties. So now that we've added a config.js file, we can begin to add more functionality and customization to the site by setting some of the basic config file properties. So the properties that we'll be setting, we'll be using the head, meta, and title tags. And to learn more about these tags, can check out the following references. You can, uh, we can take a look at the HTML head tag, the HTML meta tag, and the HTML title tag links right here to learn more about them. Now, as we develop the site, we're gonna be adding more config file properties as needed. And for a full list of the available config file properties, you can check out the config reference documentation right here. All right, so now let's get into the title property. So the title property is used to define the title for the site. So the provided value is used to prefix all page titles and it gets shown in the nav bar when using the default theme as a link to the home page. All right, so the expected type is a string and the default value is undefined. All right, so if we come over here, we can then add the title for the site. So we can do title and then we can set it equal to code monkeys. And we will save this file. Now, after adding the title and saving the file, you should see code monkeys or whatever value you set as your site's title in the top left of the nav bar as a link to the home page. All right, so if we come over here and we may just have to refresh the page. Let's see if we restart the development server, if it will show up. So you may have to restart your development server and then refresh. All right, there you go. So now you can see over here that we have the site title of code monkeys right up here as a link in our nav bar to the home page. All right, so another thing that you can do is we can inspect the page right here. And if we come down here to the head tag and let me move myself over there so you can see. So if we come down to the head tag, you can see we have our title tag here. And it says hello view press and then it has a bar right there and then code monkeys which is that title that we set right there all right so that's what we have written right up here that you can inspect the page go to the elements tab open up the head tag and then you'll see this inside of there now the value of the title tag is going to be whatever you set as the value for the title of your site now when we update the home page in the next tutorial we're going to be removing that hello view press and then that bar from the title tag. All right, so now let's take a look at the description property. So the description property is used to define the description for the site. So the provided value is used in a meta tag in the head tag of the site. All right, so the expected type is a string and the default value is undefined. And what we can do is we can come over here and let's add description. And then I'm just going to come down here and just copy this over. So there you go. And format that and then we'll save it. All right, so after adding the description and saving the file, if we inspect the page, then we can go to the elements tab and we can open up that head tag and then we should see the following. So let's open this up make this a little bit bigger here. And then we should see the following. We should have that meta tag with a name of description. And then that the content should then be the value that we set inside of that config.js file. So if we come back over here, let's see if we have to refresh the page. Nope, there we go. So you can see right here that we have our meta tag with the name of description. And then the content is that value that we just set in our config.js file. All right, so the value of the content attribute will be whatever you set as the value for the description of your site. All right, so now let's take a look at the head property. So the head property is used to inject extra tags into the head tag of the site. 
So the expected type is an array and the default value is an empty array. All right, so you can specify a tag to inject into the head tag by using the following form. So you'd have, you'd open up an array here with that square bracket, you put the tag name in and then a comma and then you'd open up a curly brace and then you do your attribute name and then an attribute value and then a comma and then you do your attribute um, two names, so another attribute there and then the value for that attribute and then you keep on adding more attribute names and values as needed and then you would close off your curly brace and then that square bracket right there. And here are some examples of what can be injected into the head tag. So the author of the site, for example, favicons, social media metadata, links to external style sheets, client side scripts. Now to start with, we're just going to set an author by using a meta tag in the head tag. All right, so if we come over here and what we're gonna want to do is just, if we come down here, we just want to set the head and then we'll open up the square brackets and we'll open up again and then we'll type in meta and then we will type well we'll open up our curly brackets right here and then we'll say name and we will say author and then we will do content and then the author will be jd code monkey okay and let's format the file And let's see. And then we'll save it. Okay. Now, after adding the author and saving the file, we can inspect the page and go to the elements tab and open up the, open up that head tag. And then we should see the following with that meta tag with the name of author and then the content being the, the author value that we set. All right, so if we come over here and let's see, yep, right there. So we have that meta tag with the name of author and then the content is J the code monkey, okay? Now to change the author for your site, you can use a different value for the content attribute. And we'll be injecting more tags into the head tag as we develop the site. All right, so here is the updated config file. So. This is what your config file should look like after adding the title, description, and author to it. So right here, we just have that module.exports, and then you have the title which of Code Monkeys, and then we have this description right down here that we set. So if you scroll over, you can see the full description there. And then we just have our head property right there with our meta tag, and then we just give it the name of author and then the content of J the Code Monkey. And this is what your config file is gonna look like at the end of it. So if you come over here, you can see that, yep, there's the config file that we just made. So now be sure to substitute the values with your preferred values for your site. All right, so in this video, we went over how to add a config file to the site. We went over some config file properties. So we looked at the title property, the description property, and then we took a look at the head property and added the author to it. And then down here we have our updated config file. All right, so in the next video, we will be discussing the home page layout provided by the default theme. So that will be this tutorial right there. All right, so we will see you in the next video.